Hey, what's up guys? My name's Harrison Reed and I'm here to teach you the trombone and tell you that it's easier than you think. Anybody can be a great musician. Uh, you just need to know where to start and I'm here to help. So, hey, today we're gonna be talking about how to put together a trombone, how to handle a trombone, and how not to break your trombone, which is easier to do than you would think. So, here we go. Um, I've got my handy dandy stand today. Uh, a stand is great. So, all right, actually, yeah, first, how do you put together a trombone? Well, it's really easy. There's pretty much three parts that come in the case. Um, the first thing that you'll probably want to take out is the bell, which I've already got out. Uh, put it on a stand or whatever, get your slide going. Mouthpiece goes in gently. There, especially for kids and especially for beginners, we want to go, oh man, and bang this in. Don't do that. There's a part inside the slide um, that's tapered that this mouthpiece shank goes into. That's called the lead pipe. Now, the lead pipe is a super important component of the trombone that I can, I'll probably get into more in another lesson. Um, but one of, the, one of the most important features of it is how it interfaces with this shank on the mouthpiece. This is a large bore trombone. It has what's called a Morse taper. This is a large bore trombone mouthpiece, which also has a Morse taper shank. All you need to do is just gently put it in there. Some teachers will tell you, give it a little twist, but these fit together so well, I don't have to. Um, if you really twist it, if you bang it, not only is it gonna get stuck, and you'll have to have a tech pull your mouthpiece out, but you're gonna damage that lead pipe that goes uh, into the ins inside of this slide. Um, if you damage the lead pipe, it's gonna change the way the horn plays, Maybe you maybe you get lucky. Maybe it'll play great, but I doubt it. You're probably gonna break your trombone, so don't don't do that. Um, all right, we got our mouthpiece in our slide. The slide, you want to be really careful with it. When you take it out of the case, don't bang it on stuff. This is a delicate piece of equipment. Um, if we damage this crook, this is called the slide crook. It's gonna change the way the horn plays. If we damage these outer tubes, your slide's not gonna work anymore. If we bang it on stuff, and, or if we take this apart and bang these inner tubes on stuff, it's not gonna work anymore. These, these two inner tubes need to be perfectly aligned and perfectly straight for the horn to work well. And if you look closely on your horn, you may see that there's a section on the end that's a little thicker than the rest. Those are called the stockings, and those fit very tightly within this outer slide. And that's what will give you either a good action or a bad action. So if you can imagine that those stockings, when you put this back together, be very careful. Um, if you can imagine that those stockings kind of ride inside this outer slide, those are what keep everything work working smoothly and straight. But if you get a dent here, guess what? Those stockings are going to bind up on it. Your slide won't work. So this is the most important part of your trombone no matter if it's a student model or an Edwards or an alto trombone or whatever kind of trombone, except maybe a valve trombone. I don't play that. We're not going to talk about that. Um, yeah, take care of your slide. Um, more on that later in this video. All right, once you get your bell out, again, you want to be careful with that. Um, the bell section will fit on what's called the tenon. This is the tenon. Um, that goes in, again, there's there you're gonna want to oh, jam it down and twist it don't don't do that you don't need to do that um, and then this nut kind of just tightens down don't over tighten it um, you can see there's there's gonna be kind of an angle formed between the slide and the bell and I kind of have this opened up a little bit too much so it's okay to twist it a little bit so that you kind of want a 90 degree angle maybe sometimes a little less um, I've seen some people play with it more. That's weird, I don't know. Um, there's, maybe that's just what works for them. Um, okay, my horns together. I didn't over tighten anything. I didn't jam the mouthpiece in. All right, good. Um, how do we handle the trombone? So, there's, as soon as you get your trombone and if you're sitting, you're gonna wanna, oh, look, there's this bumper on, on the end of the slide. See that little black bumper? I'm gonna put that on the ground. That's okay. I'm going to be really gentle. You can rest it like that, but you don't want to do it for too long. Um, the trombone is heavy, there's weight, and all of that weight is resting on your outer slide tubes um, where they go up into these cork barrels um, or bumper barrels. 
So all of this weight from this trombone, if it's resting on these slides, they're gonna compress, they might com go um, out of true, they might go out of alignment. And if, if you have the tendency to, or, or if you want to put it down like this and then lean your weight on it, like a lot of kids do at school, I know you do it, um, that's even worse for the slide. Don't do that. If you want a better way to hold your trombone when you're not playing it or when you're sitting it, uh, sitting in a chair, grab the two slides with your right hand and just rest it. Just rest it like that. All of the weight is on this tenon joint and you're not gonna damage your slide holding it this way. Um, when you're holding your trombone and you're playing your trombone, all right, let's talk. Um, just have an open hand. If you have an F attachment, which I hope you do, my lessons, I usually, you know, I teach people buy a horn with an F attachment. Um, although my king's got a brace, even though it have, has an F attachment. This horn does, you'll notice that this brace is way high. My thumb can't go around it. That doesn't make any sense. So um, reach around. See that? That's how you hold your trombone. Um, there's this thing uh, called a slide lock. I'll engage it. So now you can see if I let go of my pinky, my slide's not gonna go anywhere. If I disengage the slide lock, again, you don't need to over loosen it or over tighten it. Now my slide's free to move. Okay, so sometimes you'll see people sit with their horn like this on their lap. That's okay. Um, I do it, everybody does it. It depends on if you have a short break, yeah, turn your page, that's fine. For a really long break or a lot of, a lot of rests during a piece, I'll do this, unless if the conductor says, hey, I don't want you to do that for whatever reason. Um, and I've had some conductors that really care about appearances, so obviously do what your conductor says. But if I, I can't stress enough, be very careful of your slide. So when we play, oftentimes we'll have a stand right here. And especially for young kids, they love to be just in a stand and they will hit the stand with their slide. Be careful. You have probably good eyes. If you don't have good eyes, get glasses. Your, your, your stand can be a little far away and then you don't have to worry about hitting your bell or hitting your slide. I hope you're, I hope you're catching my drift here. We wanna be, we wanna take care of our instrument and we wanna make sure that our slide is always working as best as it can. All right, when we're playing, um, for these lessons, sit upright or stand upright. And what does that mean? That means um, I'm, not, I'm not compressed, I'm not tight, I'm not leaning over. But I, I, just because we're sitting straight doesn't mean we need to be tense. Um, it should be very natural. Um, there's a tendency for beginners to want to go to their horn. And I'm not talking about just kids. Adults, too, want to go move their head to their horn. Don't do that. The horn always moves to you. See that? The horn comes up to you. Now, when we are playing, um, this will be trickier for beginners. There's a couple ways of holding the slide. A lot of beginners will want to have their whole hand on this brace. Now, think about that. With that much of, of your grip, it's too easy to move to the left or to the right. And what is that doing? It's putting stress on these inner slides here. You don't want to do that. So most teachers will recommend, okay, we're going to hold, we're going to hold the slide like this. Thumb on one side, two fingers on the other. That's good. Um, notice if I hold my horn that way, all I have to do is just kind of put a little bit of force on it and my slide is moving freely. There's a, there's a better way, there's a way that I hold my horn that I recommend. If you're a kid, it might be scary, maybe, maybe do the way I just demonstrated, but if, you're, if, if you want to have the best slide action and take the best care of your slide, all I use is my index finger and my thumb and the rest of my fingers are free. That does a lot of, a lot of there's a lot of benefits to that. First of all, check out my hand. See how my wrist is straight. And I'm not, I'm not going like this, I'm not going like this. It's just a straight wrist. And I can, I can use my wrist a little bit to move my slide back and forth, but pretty much all of that action is just done very naturally with just my, my forearm. Almost like a violinist would pull a bow. Um, 
it is almost impossible if you only have your thumb and your finger there to apply any force in this direction against the inner slides or to pull it this way, which remember, we don't wanna do that. We, we wanna take care of our slides. So this will have the least impact on damaging your slide and it will actually allow for very accurate slide movement and slide positioning um, once we get into playing. So just some food for thought. Um, that's, that's how you hold your trombone. Um, that's how you take care of the slide. Never put pressure on it. Don't jam your mouthpiece in. Um, hey, I hope this gave you a good start on and a, and a, a good peace of mind on putting uh, the well-being of your instrument to the, to the fore. So take care of your horn and it's going to take care of you. Have a great day. Thanks for, for showing up, guys. I appreciate it.